Welcome back, shalligators. Feels like I was just here because I was. I literally just put up a video on who was it, Kim and Pete, and Brittany comes out from left field being like, I'm Brittany and I'm pregnant. Is Britney Spears pregnant? I'm literally in the middle of my dinner and Sam Asgari confirms that they're having a baby. Like, I guess. Girl, bye. Bye. But back to the rest of the video. Okay. Or is she in the middle of a psychotic break? I mean, one of just a seemingly endless one, right? I don't really know what's going on, but I do know that I'm gonna rant about it. I do know that I'm gonna rant about it because this is not a well woman. And in my unprofessional opinion, but my professional opinion as someone who is mentally stable, so I feel like that gives me a little street cred, should she be having a baby? Considering she already doesn't have custody of the two she has? I'm gonna break down what's going on here. I'm gonna read some of your guys' comments to me because I asked, what do you guys think about this? Like, what, what the fuck? And boy, oh boy, did you have a lot of great things to say. So we're gonna get into it. Also, I recently spent some time with someone who is very close to Brittany and I got some inside scoop that most people are never going to have and things did not end great with us, so fuck it, I'm gonna share it. Not like a ton of stuff, but it's going to give some insight into Britney's mindset and really what happened in the conservatorship. Because look, I'm not devoid of empathy for this woman, but at this point, my empathy skews a little harder towards a child, a defenseless child like the two she already has, or one that might come into the world into a potentially not stable situation. And don't worry, we're gonna shred that little motherfucker boyfriend of hers because things are working out a-okay for his ass. Working out great. So we're gonna talk about all of that, plus like how to know when you're ready to have a baby and the number one reason, the number one sign that you're not ready. And it relates to plastic surgery. What? Oh yeah. I'm gonna tie it all together, but before we get started, just wanna remind you guys, yeah, check out the video I just put up with uh, about Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson and the one little text trick she did to really get her hooks into him. I know, we have to like hive mind and pretend that he wasn't like lock, stock, and barrel completely all in with her, that he like maybe needed a little convincing, but hey, if you're dealing with a guy who's really hot, you don't know how to approach him, whether this is IRL, over text, anything, this is a really good icebreaker conversation starter that's going to set up the exact right dynamic you want, get him interested in you, and really, like Kim did, sink your teeth on into that boy. Also, we have two spots left for our Shalligator getaway to Mexico. I would love to have you. We all just become best friends. We're gonna hang out in the sun. We're gonna take pictures, snorkel, whale shark dive. It's just gonna be fantastic. It's at the end of August. Go ahead and click the link down there in the bio. Hope to see you soon. Also, I mean, no, not also. Okay, let's talk about Brittany, okay. So yes, her Instagram is a glimpse into complete madness. I mean, let me just go up front and say, most 40-year-old women, or 30-year-old women, 20-year-old women, don't post shit like this on their Instagram. Not once, I have, it has never even crossed my mind, never crossed my mind to post something like this. Now, Shallon, don't body shame Brittany. I'm not body shaming her, her body's fantastic, good for her. It's not an appropriate thing to put on social media. I'm appropriateness shaming her. It's weird. Remember how I just said two minutes ago that I have some inside info on Brittany? Okay, you know, hold on, we're, we're skipping around. Let's, let's just first talk about what's actually going on here. Okay, so she posted this picture, like literally like a stock photo of like a rose. It looks like art you would find in a nail salon. You know what I mean. With this caption. Now, it is full of multiple punctuation points, like three question marks, three exclamation points and a billion emojis. So because I can't use words to describe those, I'm going to make a seagull sound. Uh, 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 uh. Because to me, when I see people write things with all these emojis, they come across as like some sort of dumb gull, dumb bird, like a bird that would see a French fry on the ground and, like, uh, 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 and just be like really into it or like something shiny. Uh, 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 uh. So that's the noise I'm going to make when we're encountering these unpronounceable symbols. Got it? Great, here we go. I lost so much weight 
to go on my Maui trip only to gain it back. I thought, geez, what happened to my stomach? My husband said, no, your food pregnant, silly. And by the way, I'm doing the exact amount of emojis and things like it correlates to how many gall sounds I'm making. So I got a pregnancy test and, uh, well, I am having a baby. Four days later, I got a little more food pregnant. It's growing. If two are in there, I just might loose it. Not lose, loose. I obviously won't be going out as much due to the paps, paparazzi, getting their money shot of me like they unfortunately already have. It's hard because when I was pregnant, I had perinatal depression. I have to say it is absolutely horrible. Women didn't talk about it back then. Some people considered it dangerous if a woman complained like that with a baby inside her. Oh, she's from Louisiana, so. But now women talk about it every day. Thank Jesus we don't have to keep that pain a reserved proper secret. This time I will be doing yoga every day, spreading lots of joy and love. That's a lot of seagull noises in one post, isn't it? For a woman in her 40s, this is a lot of seagull. We're getting a lot of gull. It's giving gull. So people are like, what the fuck is she even talking about? Like, is she pregnant? Does this not say it all? That the woman can't construct a simple pregnancy announcement without it being like, what? Like you cracked open the skull of like, I... The fact that she can't even string together words without gull sounds being infused in there, like, kind of says it all. Is this the woman who should be a mother? Okay, you want to know the T? You want to know the real deal T? Okay, so this is this is what I heard. I won't tell you. I know this person. I won't tell you who it is. But should I? No. <laughs> Such a bitch. Anyway, he's very close to Brittany and, like, has spoken publicly about her and is like a kind of a big deal on the Hollywood scene. He's not like famous himself, but he's like definitely in these circles. He's a photographer. And he's very, very, very empathetic towards Britney. And honestly, like him talking about his experience with her made me really empathetic. You know, her conservatorship was like, I mean, it was like a fiefdom. It was just indentured servitude. It was terrible. They pumped her full of drugs all the time and made her perform. It was awful. It was, and the fact that it's like her family doing this is just, I, don't, I know that I probably sound naive and old-fashioned, but, like, isn't your family supposed to protect you? I, that's just so fucked up. But one carrot on the stick that they were constantly using with her is getting her kids back. You know, it was... The courts would say, well, you need to prove that you're stable enough to get your kids back. And the conservators were like, well, you do that, Brittany, by working a ton. And she's like, okay. Yes, I'll, I'll work a ton because he's like, the only thing she cared about was getting her kids back. That was like priority number one for her. That's, that's why she was compliant because she thought, okay, I'm just going to obey and I'm going to get my children back with Kevin Federline. I know, right? <sighs> she suffered enough. And, but then it was like this catch 22 that would work against her. Like she'd perform and she'd work a ton and the courts would be like, the conservators would be like, we'll see. She's working so much. It's like, this is... What's right for her? The conservatorship's working because she's out there performing. So she needs to stay in the conservatorship. And she's like, no, I'm doing this so I can get my kids back. So it was, it was this like fucked up cycle that she could never break free from. And I mean, that's, that's horrible to me. That's really, that's really sad, obviously. And I'm glad that she's out of that. However, Brittany's been out of this conservatorship for a while now. I mean, what has it been? Several months? I, I don't know. I'm not like a Britney super stan that marks this shit on my calendar. I don't care. Um, have you heard her say one thing about getting her kids back? I mean, honestly, have you? I haven't. I have read a myriad of captions eviscerating her family and talking shit on them. You know, rightfully so. I'm not saying she's not, she's wrong to say that but I haven't heard anything from her about her kids. I have seen more of her vagina than I have about her children. Now, maybe that's part of some strategy. I can't imagine how her vagina would factor into that, how posting multiple nudes would help her get her children back. I, 
but maybe she's not speaking on it because something's going on behind the scenes. Maybe. But again, what's going on in front of the scenes is not great to convince a court. You're a stable person who should have your two teenage children back. Teenagers need a lot of work, right? Like they need a, a really, really stable place. And kind of a dumb dad is better than an unstable mom. A stable, dumb dad is better than an unstable mother. Unstable, is it? And Brittany does not seem stable. I mean, her caption, her photos, the vagina, it's giving gall. So it's hard for me to believe still in what this guy told me that like, oh yeah, her kids are the most important thing to her. Okay. And how many bites at the apple does someone get? I mean, right? I, I think that that's the question that came up the most when I asked you guys about this on my Instagram. Why isn't she focusing on the kids she has? Why is she just like paving over that and starting over with a new baby? Should she even be allowed to do this? Now look, I mean, now we're getting into deep waters of like autonomy over your body and you know I am like a body autonomy absolutist. No vaccine for me. Give your, get an abortion if you want, abortion rights. Like decide your medical care. Like I really, really strongly believe in that. But I also think that if someone is not capable of governing their life, should you have the right to bring another life in, into the world? I mean, I talk about body autonomy in absolutist terms for people who are governing their life just fine already. And I've said before, like, you wanna talk white privilege? All these woke fuck Britney stands come here, try to cancel me, good fucking look. You can't cancel someone who works for themselves. Do you know that? Like, is that, do you, well, you don't know that because you're like a Britney super fan. And so life is probably just a, a brutality for you all the way around. Anyway, yeah, these woke fucks come here, like leave Britney alone, let her have another baby. Okay, if the headline here was black woman who had two children taken away, non-famous black woman who had two kids taken away is pregnant again, would you receive that with the same amount of fanfare? Would you? Because typically society doesn't. Typically people come down on women of color pretty fucking hard, right? So forgive me if I'm not giving Britney a ton of leeway where Native American women who are forced sterilized and black women and Latino women who don't have any of the resources available that Britney does are told that they shouldn't be mothers and shame for having kids. I mean, what the fuck? Come on, what is the difference? You, what is the difference? Because you like Britney? I like a lot of people. Doesn't mean they should be parents. I like myself. I don't know that I should be a parent either. And I am woman enough and mature enough to look that in the face and be like, I don't think I'd like it. I don't know that I'm stable enough. And I've got news for you. I'm really fucking stable. I don't drink. I'm healthy. I'm pretty financially well off. I've got a great support system, family, friends. And I'm like, I'd be a child bride if I had a baby, I'd be a teen mother. I would feel completely helpless, right? And I just wonder if like, you know, did you ever read Freakonomics? That's basically like the core of that book is the like, the idiots of the world just repopulate so fast. I mean, they breed so fucking fast because they're, they don't think through all the things we should think through before we have a child. It's the intelligent people who aren't breeding as much because they're like, oh, well, oh, I'm overthinking this and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's the smarties, it's the U's and I's here, the shalligators who need to be breeding. No, I'm good. I'm okay. For now, that's my, I'm okay. So should Britney be having a baby? In my opinion, no. Obviously it's not up to me. It's her own body. She can do what she wants. I just think it's really fucking sad. I think it's really sad. You know what it's not sad for? That trick ass baby daddy. Sam Asgari, fuck. Things are working out. Who was he in a past life? Napoleon? Who was that guy? Because things are working out great for him. Great for him. He's basically a gigolo. All he has to do is take pictures of Britney like with her meth teeth like in her weird labia shorts that she always wears, like the lowest rise pants in Christendom. Where does she find them? Where does she find them? He gets to travel all around with her, 
apparently bareback, you know, like no real concern there. Bro. One more thing that this guy told me, because we had like a very, I, I mean, we had like a good discussion about it and I was like really open to what he was saying about Brittany. And like I said, it gave me a lot of empathy, but I was like, you know, I listened to him and I'm like, but you see the things that she posts, right? And no, the things you post on Instagram aren't the complete picture of your life, but they are a good picture. I mean, have you ever met someone who has an incredibly messy social media presence, but they just got their life all sorted out? I haven't either. You know, it's like, oh, she's got her like vag out on Instagram. But she's a very successful architect. I don't see that correlate a lot. I don't, you know? If you're kind of a lunatic online, you're kind of a lunatic. In fact, it's just the tip of the iceberg. It's like mice. For every one you see, there's a hundred you don't. So I brought this up. I'm like, you know, you see the thing she posts. Can you honestly tell me you think she is mentally sound? And he's like, I mean, come on. Are any of us mentally sound? I was like, yeah. <laughs> Actually, most of us are. Yes, we, yes, we are, yes. I can joke about, oh, I'd be a teen mom. No, I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't. I am perfectly mentally stable. I mean, yeah, we have our bad days. We have our freak outs at CVS. We've all been there. By and large, people are, yeah, they are. So it's like, and I hear that, that argument about Britney. It's like, oh, I mean, cause you're doing so well. As a matter of fact, I am. And if you're watching this video, you probably are too. If you come to this channel a lot, you're probably doing great because that means you want to be the best you that you can be. Right there, you're crushing it. Right there, you are living so much more exceptionally than the average bear. The average bear is still mentally stable, but you're exceptional. Pigeons are fine. A lot of people are pigeons. Brittany's a gull, people are pigeons. We're eagles, we're all the way up here, right? But I digress. Let's see what some of you guys had to say about this. <laughs> Frightening, sick, she can't take care of the two she has. How she shouldn't be a mom with her mental health issues. I can't. Hi, Ellie. Try reading the caption in a Southern accent. It kind of helped. <laughs> I should have. I'm Bertner. Having a child with the wrong man. The insanity of having children. Ugh, right? It just seems so hard. Signs of a bad and toxic mother. Oof. A video on tax law would be less boring. All right, Susanna. Faking a pregnancy for attention. Eh. How to be ready, trust the process, but still be in charge of your own destiny. How to know you're okay to have a baby. Mm. <laughs> Let's talk about that. How to know when it's okay to have a baby. How to know when you're ready. I don't have kids, you know, so I obviously can't speak on this from like been there, done that. But I do have a million friends with kids and you know they all kind of say the same thing my own mother included like you're never going to be 100 percent ready it's kind of like anything else learning to drive going off to college like starting your first job at some point you just got to do it you just got to go for it and take that leap however there are some things that you should pay attention to your finances being poor is not fun being a poor and being a mother seems unbearable it seems very difficult right and remember how I said we're gonna tie this into plastic surgery? Ah, here it comes. We talk about plastic surgery here before I'm very open, like I've gotten filler, I got Botox the other day, I feel like a woman again. Plastic surgery is great if you want to modify something on the outside to fit how you feel about yourself. Like, you know what? When I look in the mirror, I just don't feel like I look as good as I could. It's this one little thing that bugs me. I wanna fix it. Great, it's your body, do whatever you want. But if you're looking at breast implants and imagining that once you have those two sacks of silicone in there, everything that you're stressed about, every problem, every anxiety, every dead end, heartbreak, will suddenly be gone. No longer an issue. You're in for a world of hurt because that's not how it goes. We cannot fix an internal issue with an external solution. It just doesn't work like that. Our self-esteem isn't that simple. It's not that simplistic. God, I wish it was, right? Don't you wish that it was sim as simple as like putting on a fancy dress and suddenly I feel great. You might feel a little better, 
But whatever was making you feel not great is probably still there. You're just in a fancy dress. You just have a different nose. You just have giant tits. You just have a baby. You can take out your tits, you can get your old nose back, and you can take that dress off. A baby is here to stay. And so when I see people entering into motherhood willy-nilly, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, dude. It's really hard for me to be happy for people. And I'm not just talking about Brittany, I'm talking about people I know. Like I have a friend and she's in not a great marriage, a very volatile marriage. They each have a kid from previous marriage. So they've got, they've got kids, healthy, beautiful boys. And she's talking about having a kid with her husband now. And I'm like, Jess, like why? Why? This is not a baby to fix things. This is, it shouldn't be a baby because you're bored, a baby because you want a renaissance of like new motherhood and starting over. Like no child should come into this world with an agenda, with a to-do list stuck to his little body. Fuck you if that's what you do. Fuck you. Fuck you. Sorry. I don't care if you're Britney Spears or my friend or whoever. Fuck you. And if you came into the world with that, I am so, so sorry. You didn't deserve that. Not at all. You weren't there to fix your parents' marriage, to give someone something to do, to take care of a person when they get old. And I've talked a lot about my reticence to have children. And, you know, the main reason I thought I would have kids or I should, because it is a should, is someone to take care of me when I'm old. Fuck me. Fuck you, Shallon. Why do you think that that's a child's job? Do I live with my grandmother? No. Do I even live with my mother? No. So you think your child's going to live with you? when you put it that way, right? That's not their job. Come on. It's not Britney's baby, food baby, who even fucking knows what. It's not that child's job to give her purpose, to anchor her life, to give her some sort of fidget spinner now that she's out of conservatorship. And I just, it's also crazy to me when people like, and I'll say this with people who like lose a bunch of weight. And then the first thing they do is get pregnant. I'm like, really? Or they finally, they just graduate college and they have a baby. Or they get that promotion, they have a baby. It's like, don't you just want to enjoy your life where you're at? Girl, you're free, you're rich, you still got a great body, you're beautiful, if you don't look at the teeth and the makeup. Don't you just want to have some fun? Travel the world! Go do all the things that you weren't allowed to do in the conservatorship. You want to have a baby. I mean, that's not how I'd play it, but... I don't know. And I just want to read a few funny things <laughs> from one of you guys. How to stay sane in the year 2022. Honestly, don't even know. She never makes sense. Not a single caption on her Insta makes any sense. Why does literally every person in the public eye at the moment seem to be just unhinged? I know. I'm not sure she, if she is unwell or just has a ninth grade Louisiana public school education. Ninth grade is being generous. The benefits of having a baby later in life are not at all. This is great. Let's talk about that. Again, I don't have kids, but I am approximately 500 years old. And I mean, a lot of my friends had kids when they were young, like right out of college. And, you know, there is a pro and con to that. Like they were young, vivacious parents, a body bounced back. But my mom said it to me, right? Because a girl I went to college with, like in college, she had a baby and we were like, whoa. And my mom was like, you know what? She'll be fine. But the years of her life that were supposed to be the most fun are going to be the most hard. Like her 20s are going to be really hard. But by the time she's 40, she's going to be like footloose and fancy free. Her kids are going to be in college, which is wild. She's not going to be stressed about she the baby. You know, she's not going to be, she's not going to have those questions that people might if they do it the opposite way if they wait and focus on their career early on and then they decide to have a baby later in life she's not going to be wrestling with fertility issues like it's it's all going to be inverted so it's like there's no perfect scenario it's different strokes for different folks studies do confirm though that if you wait three years after getting marriage your marital satisfaction upon having a child is drastically higher drastically you have a better sense of who your partner is. You've come up with a decent division of labor, right? Because after three years, if things aren't going well, hopefully you're not gonna double down and have a kid to save the marriage. Hopefully you're just gonna get divorced, right? You're more comfortable with each other's family. You've also just experienced things. You've traveled, you've fucked a bunch, you've maybe done some weird drugs, done some anal, it's great. You're more 
purposeful about your decision to have a child. There's very few arguments against waiting a little bit longer to have a baby until you're more financially stable, until you know more what you want out of life, where you're going to live. You've traveled more. You've done more anal. Who, who knows? So look, the worst thing you can do as a woman is put yourself on this very rigid schedule. Now, of course, we don't just want to like be a passenger and in our own life and just like ugh, like bounce through our own existence like a balloon. We do want to be purposeful and have agency and have some sort of goals for ourselves. But when I look at my friends who are the most unhappy, it's like they've done some things too soon and some things too late. You know, they've been very, very purposeful about their career, which is fantastic. Like, and I, I'm... A New Yorker, so like I see this a lot, like very purposeful about their career and hit it super hard, but they have been not at all purposeful about who they dated. Not at all. If you templated the way they dated onto a career, they would have had like seven different careers. Oh, today I work at Quiznos and tomorrow I work at H&R Block and now I'm going to nursing school and maybe I'll be a podcaster. It's like, what the fuck? Like they were all over the place. They didn't know who they were. They didn't know what they wanted. And guess what? If you did that with a career, you would look at someone like that and be like, I bet you're poor. I bet you're really stressed out. I bet you have no idea what your life is adding up to. You have no sense of legacy, continuity, self-fulfillment, nothing. Well, it's not that different when you date that way. That's exactly how they feel. Unmoored, adrift, and now in their mid-30s, summer 40s, they're panicked as fuck, okay? I wish we would just approach our lives not with rigidity and schedule, but purposefulness. If you want children, great. Don't date guys who don't want them. Not even for a little. Ask them this on the first date. Why is that weird? If that's weird, he's the wrong guy for you. If that's weird, that is not a man. That's not a mate. That's a fuck boy. Because look, you're a busy woman. You value your time. Hey, where do you see yourself in five years? And he's like, oh, uh, look, I'm really into like beer pong and I kind of want to get into Call of Duty gaming. Goodbye. If it's weird to say like, you know what? I think, you know, within the next 10 years, I'd like to maybe settle down, ha have a family. Like what's your, do you have a 10 year plan at all? Like where do you see yourself in terms of family stuff? get smarter so that it doesn't have to get harder. Whatever you want, whatever your path is, it's fine, girl. If you want to be 22 and be a mom, fucking do it, man. If you want to be 42 and you're not quite ready to be a mom, that's all right also. But you're never going to find that perfect scenario. You're never going to find your tribe, your partner, your best friend, your path. If you're not honest with yourself, you can lie to your friends. You can lie to me, you can lie to boys. Please don't sit around lying to yourself. Please, please. That's like going to a restaurant, ordering a kale salad. You're actually allergic to kale, you fucking hate it. You wanted a burger, you didn't order it. And then for some reason being super pissed and confused that the kale salad came out. Well, it's what you ordered. You didn't have the guts to face what you wanted, so you didn't get something you wanted. Or worse, you're not saying anything at all. You're not even going as far to lie to yourself. You're just sort of like sitting there waiting for life to happen. We've all experienced this. Well, go to a restaurant and don't order anything. See what arrives. You know what arrives? Security. They're going to escort your ass out. They don't want you here. You're useless. Is life any different? If we are not purposeful with where we're going, someone else will be purposeful about where they want to take us. If we are not using our resources to create our own dreams, then we are being used as a resource to create someone else's. If we don't know who we are, someone else will tell us. We can't do that. I don't know if that's what's happening to Brittany. Quite frankly, I don't care. She's not my circus, she's not my monkey, and she's not yours either. And if you're some demented Brittany stan and you kind of do think she is your circus and your monkey, please, please get some help. Just maybe like, maybe go get your like testosterone checked. I did, you know, like, Get your, get your hormones balanced. Get outside. Get some fruit in your system. Some good citrus. Kara Kara oranges are in season. They're delicious. Just try it. See where it gets you. The rest of us, eagle status. We're good over here. I want to know your thoughts on this. I'm sure that there's like points I missed, things I didn't get to rant about. 
I have a feeling in like 24 hours we're gonna get a like, I'm not pregnant, I'm burning, and I'm not pregnant. Here's my nipples pregnant. And yeah, by the way, speaking of like plastic surgery, of course she has implants. Of course she has implants. She lies and says she doesn't, she does. Girl, where do we even begin with this chick? I will see you next time, Shalligators. Enjoy my two videos. <laughs> Uh, let me know what Jennifer Lopez topic you want because we're going to do a video about that too. Let me know down in the comments. Mwah! See you later, Shalligators.